Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of This Organized Life. I am your host, Lori Palau, and today I am joined by Danielle Gannon. And I'm going to bring Danielle out in a minute, but I've known Danielle for several years now, and she is a Bucks County native. She's a business owner of a natural market locally, which is amazing. Organans, shout out to Organans. She's also a mama to three littles. So that's a whole to do. She also, during like right as the pandemic was hitting, she started, and I can't wait to talk about this. She started a cooperative homeschooling initiative with some friends called the Red Barn Homeschool or Red Barn School, right? Is that what it's called? Time out. Red Barn? Red Barn Homeschool. Right. I, okay, I was right. She started the Red Barn Homeschool, which I, I look at the pictures on Instagram and all I want to do is send my kids there if they were little. And she also has her own entrepreneurial venture where she interviews local business owners and entrepreneurs. So I love her entrepreneurial spirit. So I figured for all of my fellow moms, entrepreneurs, business owners, just our entire TOL audience, Danielle is all of that wrapped up into one. So I wanted to bring her on the show, just have her share a little bit about herself, her story, and just give some inspiration to all of us as we can all look to look at other people's stories and hopefully take little bits of nuggets and apply them to our own lives. So without further ado, let me welcome my friend Danielle to the show. Welcome, Danielle. Hi, Laurie. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thanks so much. It's so funny. We're, we're going to, by the time this episode drops, it's, we're going to hopefully be well into 2021, but we're recording this now and I'm looking at your adorable Christmas decorations behind you. And right now we're all in the, in the holiday spirit. So I hope all of your holidays are going well. I know that's actually why I had to get my, I got my decorations up like a week prior to when I normally do like a week and a half before Thanksgiving, because I'm like, this year has just been full of a lot of uncertainties and a lot of things that did not, um, did not feel good. So I couldn't wait to like decorate for Christmas. Christmas always makes me so happy. So I just had to get the, get the house festive. I think a lot of people can share that sentiment because I saw Christmas decorations going up earlier than I ever have. So, which, Hey, listen, we got to find joy in the little things whenever we can. Yeah, for sure. So I gave our listeners a real top line overview over who you are, but in your own words, just tell us a little bit about Danielle, wife, mom, or, oh, sorry, not wife, sorry, take that back. (laughs) Mom, entrepreneur, teacher now, um, all the things. Yes. Um, Yeah, I, I mean, God, Laurie, like to put it into the simplest terms. Yeah. Like number one, first and foremost, my priority are my three children, um, Abigail, who's nine, Gabriel, who is seven and Sebastian, who's four. So, you know, they've kept me busy now for the last 10 years that I've been either pregnant and, or, you know, um, parenting all of them. And it really all started my real deep journey into discovering who I am and what I wanted to do really all started with the birth of my babies because it led me down this rabbit hole, so to speak, of how do I want to, like how I can be better, how I can be my best self. And um, when I became pregnant with Abby, I started digging through, you know, all kinds of information, which was, you know, organic food and the rabbit hole that that took me down. And so essentially, that's why we wound up opening Organins, which is the natural food store in Wrightstown. And, um, you know, now there's a second one in New Britain as well, about a half a mile or so from Delval Community College. But that was the initiator of that was understanding the importance of eating healthy while you're pregnant and staying away from toxins and pesticides and things like that. And then it led us down this rabbit hole of being like, you know what, we really want to do something that we resonate with, that feels good to us, that we want to raise our children around. And so that was, you know, the the birth of the store. Um, 
then I would say, you know, a couple of years into that, I really started to, well, then I got into essential oils. So I started hosting essential oil classes at the store and throughout the tri-state area. And people would always, I became kind of, I guess, like by default, the organic mama in the area that everybody reached out to for holistic um, alternatives of how to heal their children if they have an ear infection and they're teething or they're not sleeping or, you know, your tummy issues and all kinds of things. So organically, it just kind of became where I was giving a lot of information out. So then I started hosting these classes that turned into a really big thing. And I was getting requests from different businesses in the area to come out and host to bring people in. So that really took off about 2014 until now. Um, doing the classes and I'm a gold member with, I'm a gold leader with Young Living and, you know, I, I love doing that. This year has been different in terms of I'm not able to do like my in-person classes and traveling around because of what's been going on, but um, I'm still able to withstand that business and do a lot online. And then, you know, a couple of years ago, I went to school for journalism. So I went to Penn State University, graduated with a degree in journalism, and I always wanted to have my own little broadcast program. From the time I was a little girl, I used to set up a video camera with a tripod in my bedroom and videotape myself like interviewing strangers, interviewing neighbors, interviewing dolls, friends, whoever would sit down and talk to me. And uh, my dad has a big old box of like VHS videos that we sit down and watch like every couple of years. And it's, it's really, really fun. But that little dream always still sat inside of me. And so last year, with the store, I started doing these little local spotlights where I was videotaping, um, going out and interviewing entrepreneurs in the area that had their own business, that made their own cookies, their breads, their chocolates, kombucha, whatnot, went out, interviewed them, told a little bit about their story, and we used it as this little weekly local spotlight feature at the store. And it really went well. It was so much fun. It like lit a spark inside of me that had been missing for so many years. Cause as you know, Laurie, like when you're, when you have your kids and you're so busy with the motherhood stuff when they're little and they're in their, in their, in their baby years, it's like, you can barely keep up. You can barely even brush your teeth or run a brush through your hair. So, you know, it's, it's like that lack of love for yourself because you just don't have the time for it. So the local spotlight kind of brought that back and um, sparked me again last year this year, I decided to kind of branch off and do my own version of it, not necessarily associated with store vendors, but just local mom and pops, local community. And, um, and that's, where, that's where that was reborn. And then the most latest thing is Red Barn Homeschool. So um, basically, with the turn of events that have happened this year, my kids were in traditional schooling in the spring when this all, when this pandemic and everything started. And they were doing Zoom calls every day. And I could see how draining it was and how much it affected them and how much it affected me too. And um, so through the summer, myself and a couple of other like-minded moms and dads got together and we're like, okay, like what's our plan if school doesn't go back like, you know, quote unquote normal for the fall. And through a lot of different conversation, we formed what we call Red Barn Homeschool. And it is on a 30 acre property in Furlong. It's in a big old red barn that we converted to a big classroom. And it's a co-op type situation where each parent, you know, volunteers their time to take on something that the school needs. So I'm the English teacher. We have a parent doing math, history, science, you name it. We have a gym teacher that comes in, an art teacher. Um, We take field trips. So yeah, so it's been it's been incredible. It's been a really really big feat, but I can see like the impact that we're having on the kids every day, and it just warms my heart and makes me feel so good. And for everyone out there, like, and I've been following this since you started. As soon as you started at Barn Home School, I was like, oh my god, I love this. You, yeah, you have your own like Instagram feed for them, and the stuff that you guys are doing is incredible. And when I look at how these kids at least through the Instagram lens that I'm seeing. These kids are thriving. The things that they're doing, the hands-on, the connection, safely, everybody, you know, see. But it, it's just, it's like a throwback. It's in the it in the best way, like in, yeah. in totally the best way. 
Um, I just, I love it. So I encourage you guys to, to check them out um, and just see some of the amazing things. And to me, it's just incredible to see like how parents, because they're moms and dads, so I don't want to just, you know, single out the moms, but like the problem solving, how you guys rallied. And this is not to say for anybody that has kept their kids through a traditional setting that there's anything wrong with that, but to really see that you had the opportunity to do yeah. something alternative and it, even though it, it ate into people's times and probably took a lot out of you, you know, in everything, in every possible way. Um, wow. But it's incredible. Talk a little bit, talk a little bit about the age range of the kids. I'm just curious to know a little bit more mm -hmm. about, cause obviously I know your kids, but talk about like kind of the spectrum of kids and how that, from a logistic standpoint, plays out with kids at different levels. And yeah, you guys aren't trained educators per se. Right. Um, and, and that's been the biggest hurdle of figuring this out. And, and like you said, it, like, it, it goes back in time, like something from, you know, like prior, like, like, I don't even know how many years ago, maybe even like the fifties or forties, or I'm not sure when they used to do these little like community schools like this, but this is what it is. It's like a little schoolhouse, a little old fashioned schoolhouse. So there's in a large range of different, um, of different children here. And you're kind of like, okay, how are we going to make sure that nobody's falling behind and that they're all like being taught what they need for their level within a group of, of 11 children that are there for the schooling. So there's three kids that are in what we call our Lovebirds program. And the Lovebirds, which I love that little name for I them. I know, it's so cute. It's so cute. It's, um, that's like our little preschool. So they are um, all four years old. So Miss Brittany, who is the owner of the farmhouse and the barn, she is the teacher of the preschoolers. She's the teacher of them. So, you know, what happens is we all come in in the morning and we all do a big circle time, all the age ranges of the kids and the little preschoolers are involved too. And we go around and we ask like a question, like, you know, we do a little song, we hold hands and then we, um, we all like, you know, there'll be a topic of the day, like what is your fate? You know, what were you most thankful for, for Thanksgiving this year? Or what is your favorite um, candy? We just, just like lots of like little get to know you things. And then after that commences, the little lovebirds go upstairs and they go into the, their preschool room. And then we all start our day. And the remainder of the kids, we have a first grader, a second grader, um, three third graders, a fourth grader and a fifth grader, or two fifth graders, I'm sorry. However, that adds up to 11. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. We range from first to fifth grade. And so luckily, because we have such like dedicated and committed parents that really wanted to do this, and we all had to, like you said, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of coordination. Now, when you usually have like your quote unquote time off, when you're kids are at school and you can do errands and run around and do all these other things. Like now, no, we're there. Like we're there for the full day. So the first couple of weeks I was literally exhausted. Like I would come home every single day and I, I, I would like lay down on the couch. I'd fall asleep for an hour. And I'm like, I've never, I haven't napped since I was like a baby. Like I don't have time to nap, but I was so exhausted. I'm like, I can't believe how much this is draining me, like uh, mentally, because it's that I'm tapping into that I haven't tapped into before or for a long time. Um, and so how we do it is, you know, the class starts off with English. I'm the English teacher. I follow a program that we purchased, a curriculum called Shirley English, which is excellent, by the way. It's unbelievable, like the um, amount that they're learning in that program. So I follow a curriculum and it does have different... Um, you know, age ranges. And so I try to teach the first 20 minutes of the class, like to the whole group. But then when we break down into more specific things that are a little bit more, you know, difficult for the younger kids and whatnot, we'll split off. I keep the older kids in the classroom setting, teaching them like how to classify a sentence, the breakdown of a, of a you know, preposition, ob object of preposition, like all these things that I'm relearning. That oh my I gosh, I was learned. gonna say, I feel like I'd have to relearn this all myself. You know, like the actual deconstruction of a sentence. I do. And, and the funny thing is, is like, I am not a trained educator, but I am 
a trained like English major essentially because I am journalism. So I, it does come easier to me, but I mean, I'm relearning all kinds of stuff through this program. So it's been really cool in that way too. But yeah, and then I'll continue teaching the older kids and one of the other parents will take the younger kids and they'll read with them and they'll practice like sight words and we'll break down in that way. So, and then that continues for math too. We do like an overall lesson kind of for all of them, like something that they all kind of need to learn and then we break down. And the cool thing is too, is one of the, um, the grandmother, the Nana that lives at the farmhouse as well, she is a math professor, a retired math professor. So she's completely hands-on with having to help develop that program with our other parent. And then she has every day, two of the students go up into her apartment and they sit for one-on-one -on -one with her. And it's just like so beautiful to see because they're gaining so much from that interaction with the senior citizen. And she is too, and she's feeling important and they love going to her. It's like this whole beautiful synergy. Oh my God, I have chills. I, have I, know. <laughs> I know. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Like this may be the best thing I've ever done. Like, and, and there's no, there's no, money involved. There's no financial gain. Like this is just purely like pure and, and good and love and feelings all around that we are like actually impacting these kids in such a good way. And you can see them every day. Like they are so happy. They are thriving. They are and they know what, what's expected of them. They sit down, they do like, and, and you know, the thing is, is like sometimes in the beginning, the parents and I would be a little bit hard on ourselves. Like, oh, we feel like we, we didn't, you know, we didn't do so well with that class, this and that. And I'm like, you know what? These kids are so proud of their school and where they're at right now. And it's so important that we just hone in on that and make them feel like this is so good and so special. And they are learning so much because they are, they're free, like they're in this space and we're, we're all together every day, you know, it's a safe space and all that. But like, we've been together now for the past, you know, 60, 90 days. And so that's what, that's their group. That's their group. That's their friends. These are the families. And it's, it's a co-op. It's a community of like-minded people that feel the same about everything or the majority of things that are important in life. And we're passing that on to the kids and it's just awesome. It's just awesome. I love everything about it. I mean, you are li you are living the it takes a village. Like you are you are living I, proof. I wrote that down. I say that all the time, Lari. Yeah, I mean, because I'm always like it takes a village, but like you are walking that walk and leading by example. So obviously, this is and like so many things when you if you listen to a podcast or watch an interview with with so many people, like things that they become known for or passionate about or like not even on their radar they just happen naturally right like this yeah. what is your vision again you know you're going to see this through but this is something that you started out of a pure necessity because yeah. of the pandemic yeah. and you're seeing how you know despite the you know all of your own personal sacrifice for it um it it is having so many more benefits what's your goal like moving forward so like let's say life returns back to to normal or a new healthy normal where kids are in next fall let's say kids are and i don't even know if you've thought that far in advance is this something that you and the parents have sat down to talk about continuing on or is this going to be just a capsule of, of your time which is fine as well yeah um you know we have given that thought and there are the majority of us are pretty committed to this and doing this moving forward too. Um, there is, there are, there are some that if their school goes back to normal, their private school, they really are very privy to it. And they're, they're thinking about maybe going back if things change enough. So where they are comfortable, like sending their kids back. But um, majority of us are pretty committed to like growing this and expanding on it. And we just see, how like and again like you said there's nothing against like sending your children to traditional schooling and whatnot and that works for a lot of people and people are in those situations where that's that's what's got to happen you know um so th that is uh, is is our you know is an option but for us that are really interested and have seen the way cultivating this smaller hands-on school that's led by the parents and we are like so involved, we know what they're doing all day now. We know what questions to ask them when school's done around dinner. 
we, we know what they're learning, what they're struggling with. Like I've never had a more hands-on tuned in idea of where my kids are academically. You know what I mean? Like we just get used to sending them off to school and assuming that they're getting what they mean. Then when they come home, it's the rat race of, okay, karate, and then this, and then that, basketball, lunches, dinner, it's time to go to bed, you know? But this has really given me a idea of what's going on in their life every day. And it's such a short period of time. It's such a, a small amount of years. And you know that from your kids already being like grown, you know? So I want to continue doing this. Now, the one mom and I, the one who owns the property, and then um, we've talked a lot about expanding this and the potential of, you know, eventually opening it up, opening it up to additional children coming in and what that looks like. Um, right now, it's all co-op, so there's no finances exchanged or anything like that, but, and that makes it easy in a sense. But if we were to open it up and we have a ton of people reaching out to us constantly. I can only imagine. I can we, only imagine just within your own neck of the woods, just with your own extended friends and network. Like so many people want to be a part of it. Um, but we're kind of maxed out as far as the co-op capacity goes in terms of like what anybody could do else that would make it so that it was fair and everything. So at this point, it would have to go into that conversation of a monetary exchange, and then, you know, you drop your kids off and pick them up. But we just are not quite there yet, but we have spoken about the potential of growing it in the future, and then even potentially expanding it or franchising the idea. Um, and we, we have all kinds of ideas, and we, we really need to sit down, like iron them out, and we keep talking about it. But of course, like, this is a lot every day and we're still getting a full handle on it. But, you know, sometime in the early part of next year, because then it's going to be getting to, okay, this school year's over. Now what's happening for next year, we're going to have to really, you know, get, get a handle on that because if we're going to continue this and then eventually franchise or something like that, or charge people to come, that's like a bunch of other, it's like another, you know, a lot of other red tape and loopholes and things like that, that we'll have to Well, that's a whole other job. Like in addition yeah, to the teaching yeah. that you're doing, you know, of course my, entre of course my entrepreneurial mind is like, yeah. my wheels are spinning unbelievably. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. Um, but I just, I love it. And it's, it's really, I'm sure giving you this intimate knowledge of just seeing your kids in a different light, like you said, yeah. and, you know, and I'm sure because of this and you were working mom, before like you have the business you have you have the store all the things but this requires you red barn to be out of the house so i'm sure that there's been an impact or a change in priorities when it comes to organization or what organization maybe looks like in your own home because like you said even if your kid was in preschool and you had two hours to yourself right you could go run errands go shopping or maybe do something quick and you know, I think for so many of us with the pandemic, obviously our free time was sucked away, even though life kind of temporarily took us, you know, a pause. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about, A, I, I guess I have a few questions and you can kind of just, I'm going to put it out there and you can answer them however. Like, A, what does organization look like in your house? Um, what did it look like before? How has it changed, evolved? And then as a mom with three kids, like what's the role that your kids play in getting involved in the process? And you're also, you're a single mom too. We didn't mention that, but like, you know, I know you co-parent, but like you're wearing a lot of the hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely, um, yeah, things have changed a lot in the last year for me, for sure. Um, and I've had to like adapt with it. And you know, some days are, are really a challenge. And um, you're like, how the heck am I getting through all of this? How am I doing all this? How am I checking all these boxes? And then other days, you're just like, you know what, like, I got this, and I'm doing this, and I can do this, and you feel really empowered. Um, in terms of like, how my house and my organization has is, um, basically, like, we have a very basic system here. We have a mudroom with a, you know, a coat hooks. The kids all have their own hook. They have a cubby for their shoes. They hang their school bags up. 
when they come in the door, they you know they all have to, I pop the trunk, they all have to grab their school bags, lunch boxes, coats, shoes, whatever's in the trunk. They bring it in, they go right to the mud room, hang it all up. They then go to the trash can, empty out whatever remnants from their lunch, put their lunch boxes on the countertop, cleaned up and ready to go for repacking. And then um, they they just, you know, that's that's the organization in terms of like their stuff goes. Um, I it hasn't changed much really since the pandemic. I mean, I would say in the pandemic, we were probably less organized because it was just like mass chaos here every day. You know, I felt like I was just walking around. It was like, Groundhog's Day. It was like Groundhog's Day for all of us. Right. And it was just like, I, you know, you know, when your kids are home for like a long weekend and you're normally ready to like ship them off on Monday again, you're like, okay, like I want to get the house organized again. I want to get things tucked up and put away. But it was like that extended for months on end. Where I was just like, you're walking around like, oh my god, like when is this? Where like Legos everywhere and this and that and crayons and art stuff. But at this point, I think like I really like the structure that we have from leaving the house, going to school again, and now it's like the house is cleaned up and organized during the day. When we come home, our school stuff goes back in the mud room. Lunches go up on the countertop, and then you know it feels more organized and we're more in a system. Um, how the kids take part in that is they all have different like age appropriate chores that they've always had. I mean, you know, probably from the age of like four to five is when I really kind of start with them and giving them just little age appropriate things like, okay, like when you're done playing, all your toys have to go back in the toy box. Toy box has to be closed. No toys left in the family room on the floor. No Legos left on the floor for mom to, you know, step and stub her toe on. And then as they get older, it's now like, you know, Abby and Gabe, they're seven and nine. It's, you know, they make their bed every day. All their clothes go back in their closet on their hangers. I still wash and fold all the laundry, but they put their clothes away in their drawers. And then they empty, split the dishwasher. They empty the dishwasher every night. So that's where we're at with what they do. And um, I, I'm not haven't been the best with like the chore chart. Like I try to do the chore chart and give them little stars for it. And then, you know, have associated like a couple dollars at the end of the week so that they can make money. But that just never works out for me. I don't know. I just never keep up with it. So. I tried, I, when my kids were little, I tried every thing under the sun and none of that ever was consistent. And I kind of just landed on, we're all part of team Palau. And sometimes exactly. you're riding the bench and sometimes you're out there and right. we all just pull weight in different ways. And that's kind of, I don't know if that was just my easy way out, but yeah. keeping up with the whole chore chart was wound up becoming stressful for me, you know? Same. Same, because it's like, and my mom, well, and then it's like an expectation. Well, if I do this, am I going to get a star? Yes. Well, you really need to do this because this is what you need to do. Because yeah. in order to maintain like life here, and in order to know what's important for you and how to take care of yourself, this is part of it. So you're not getting a star for like brushing your teeth today. <laughs> you're not getting a star for flushing the toilet. Like that's just <laughs> yeah. these things, and you know. So yeah. I love it. But I love the fact, and even these little things, and I think it's really helpful for our listeners because to just hear it again, these are like reminders that sometimes either, A, it's reinforcement, like, hey, I'm, I'm on the right track. Or again, just like your four-year-old can, can carry in his own backpack. You know, like you don't have to do it for them. Like empower your kids to do that. And again, like this is not meant to shame or put figures or cast judgment on anybody that's doing these things but like your kids can can handle there's certain basic things that your kids can handle that a lot of times you know we just do because it's easier it is it is so thank you for kind of just walking us through that we're going to take a quick break and when we come back um just want to con- continue with the conversation and, and talk a little bit more about um, kind of your goals for for everything so sit tight All right, Danielle. So I know that you have, you know, all these things between, and, and I, I'm listening to your story, right? I'm listening to your story about starting when you were a kid, you know, wanting to be a journalist or a broadcaster, and then your journey to motherhood and going down the rabbit hole of 
eating healthy and organic food and just keeping your kids like natural and safe and that then turning into a business. And all of these things just naturally very grassroots seem to evolve to where you are today. Yeah. Um, do you, where do you see all of these, and, and yet they're all like intertwined, right? Every, all the things that you're yeah. doing are, are all intertwined in some yeah. way. What do you, what do you attribute to that? Like, where do you feel like how those things kind of all connected? I think, you know, I feel like when I really think about how that formed is, it's just like really like getting in touch and in tune to like what's important to you and, and what really resonates with you in how to live the most authentic life that you can. And I think in this day and age, it's particularly difficult and challenging to do that because there's just so many expectations and so many things. And then social media brings a whole other level for people of like, you know, comparison and, you know, should I be doing this or maybe I should be doing that and yada, yada, yada. But for me, I think that like when I started learning about all of the things that like the organic food and that whole rabbit hole that that brought me down into natural, you know, natural healing and all of what spiraled from that. And then that gets you, that kind of got me in. It just, it just feels so right. It's like when something just feels so right with inside of you and you know that you're on the right path, it's like, you don't have to ask anybody. You don't have to, to second guess yourself. You know, this feels right. And this is the natural way I'm going. This is the natural organic progression of my life. And so I think I've just followed that. Um, and once I really tapped into it, you know, when I was in my twenties, I didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. I was chasing, I feel like I was chasing the dollar back then, you know, because you're, you're graduating college and I have all these loans to pay off. You always thought that you were supposed to do X, Y, and Z. And so you're trying to follow all of these, you know, rules and, and life lessons. And it wasn't until my 30s that I really kind of understood more about who I am, what I really want, what feels good, and having like the confidence to just follow that. Because I think you're so uncertain of yourself. I mean, not everybody, but I certainly was when I was in my 20s and my teens. I was so uncertain of myself. I was uncertain of like, you know, just what I wanted to do and how people were going to receive it and this, that, and the other, and then the parental stuff and all of the pressures. And, but when I got into my thirties and I really started, it was really when I became a mother and I really started to look into things like deeper because you have to be a, you, you are forced to become um, the best version of yourself when you are pregnant and you're, you're raising, you know, that you're going to have these other lives that you have to care for. So I tapped into like, you know, all of that natural stuff, which felt right. That, you know, brought the store about, that brought the, the oils and natural healing. And then the next thing was like, obviously the oils fell right in line with that. And as far as the local spotlight goes, um, that is more or less something that it just, it feels so good to me. It feels so right because I love local business. I love small business. I love entrepreneurship. Like I, it's, it's like you said, like when you heard me talking about the school, it's like all of these ideas start to go off and you're kind of like, oh my gosh, this is what I have to do. This is what I have to do. You know, you, you just start to think about all of these ideas and ways that you can expand and make money. And so I love to hone in on that for people because I just think it's amazing. It's like, that's what America is based on. That's what makes our country so unique and so different is that we can come up with an idea, we can start an LLC, and we can go out there and it can become whatever we want. The sky's the limit. So I'm so inspired by entrepreneurs and their story behind what made this their vision. Why this? You know, what makes them tick? And, um, and I wanted to go out and I wanted to capture that and really bring those stories to life. Before I did it more of like, I'm just so interested in hearing like what it is you want to do and, and why, you know, because it was like a hobby that lit me up and I was like, I'm going to ride with this and see what happens. But now 
um, seeing it as being even more of a need. And that's where like this second phase of local spotlights coming in because right now, like in the middle of this pandemic, we have so much that like is at risk here, you know, for changing, for changing the way we know America and changing the way we know our country and, and the world and people's livelihoods are, are being, um, they're being really tested right now. And a lot of small businesses with the capacity that they're able to keep open and run, they're not even able to like cover their rent. So this second phase is really going to be about spotlighting these local small businesses and really getting that like story out there to really resonate with the people. These are your neighbors. These are your moms, dads, sisters, ancestors. Like this is what our country was built on. If we stop supporting them because it's easier to click a button and have it, you know, sent to our house, we are going to lose all of what makes our community so special. And I just want to try and, and get that message out there to resonate with people that, I know we're all guilty of doing it. You know, everything is one click away right now. I mean, they're talking about drones, like Amazon's going to have these big blimps next year that are, that are being constructed right now, that that's all we're going to see when we look up in the sky are a bunch of big Amazon blimps that are going to be dropping drones out of the sky with boxes down to people's front doors. And it's, 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 it's insane to me. Like, it's really <laughs> crazy. Like, I'm like, is this the Jetsons? Like, <laughs> I'm just like, you know, that's dating me too, right? 80s baby. Yeah, but I love I, it. I don't know. I just, I, I want to get back to like basics and that's where the school is too. And that's what the food is. It's all kind of like getting back to basics. Like before they were manufacturing our food in a warehouse and putting it in bags and boxes, it was grown out of the ground. You grew it out back and that's what you ate, right? That's back to basics with your food. That's the most simplest of terms into organics. And then, you know, with the um, school, it's like back to basics. Let's do a little schoolhouse. Moms and dads, we're all participating. We're all teaching. We're all going to be hands-on with our kids' education and know what they're learning and have control over it too. And then same with this, you know, the spotlight is back to basics. You got to support your mom and pops. You have to go out there and you have to, you know, buy your, you know, buy your shirts and your pants from them. It might be a couple of dollars more, but it's, it's overall going to impact you in a more healthy, positive way. So... Uh I, I love it. I think we could end the. I think we could end the interview right here because that I couldn't have said any of that better myself. I mean, as you were chatting, I wrote down the word community because to me, everything you described is just has to do with community, and that's on a personal level something that's so important to me, and I think really something that a lot of us crave. You know, we crave that wherever we are, whether you're living in Manhattan, you know, amongst thousands and thousands of people, or you're living in Wrightstown, Pennsylvania, you know, on a 20 acre farm, we all crave what our community is and being surrounded by those people that matter and that we want to matter, right? Like we want to be making an impact. And I love you know, I've been very fortunate and blessed to be able to do, take my passions and the things that I feel very strongly about and, and turn that into a profession and, and be able to hopefully have a positive impact on other people. You know, that's, you know, what I want to do. And I love the fact that you are, you know, going out there on the front lines to help share those stories and those messages for people. And you're living like you're living proof of the importance of walking the walk between the store and the oils and the school and all the things. So you're just, you know, you're the whole package, Daniel. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Thanks, Laurie. No, you really are. Um, I, I want to leave our listeners like you've obviously just had some amazing, like, advice and kind of pearls of wisdom, which is talking about shopping local and, and thinking about it. What, what, I'm just trying to think of what, how to even phrase this. What do you want your kids to grow up? Like, what's the message that you want them to have? You know, they're in these really formative years and they're growing up through this like crazy wild time. And I often like talk to my friends who have bigs going, you know, 
I wonder what it'd be like, because I think my kids are going to have a very different narrative yeah. of like looking back of this particular time of our lives, like what they remember and their takeaways from, you know, kids your age. What is it that you want them to, to learn from this example and from everything that you're doing mm -hmm. as they continue going through life? I think the, the biggest thing that I want them to know and to is is to follow your heart and listen to yourself. Like listen to that inner knowing. I want them to feel confident that they can tap in and listen to what like where their dreams are taking them. What is it that you're dreaming of? It's not it's not crazy. It's not unheard of. You don't have to follow the um, traditional way in any sense you can do and become whatever you want to do and become the sky is the limit you just have to think it and then it create you know it's like it's a thought becomes a feeling and the feeling drives the action and that is the way i try to live my life and be conscious about that um, be really conscious about the thoughts that I think because they cause this feeling inside that then drives an action and it's either a positive or a negative thing. And I want my kids to know that they are very much in control of their lives and their destiny and what they want to do and that anything is possible. Absolutely anything is possible. Because I, I always felt that way as a little girl and I don't know necessarily where that came from because my parents... Um, kind of somewhat had traditional, you know, a traditional life. And, but I had these like dreams inside that I just knew one day I was going to, to do them, that I was not going to follow suit and I wasn't going to do the traditional normal way of things. It's just a, a knowing that I had inside. And, and um, I want my kids to know that from a much, you know, like I knew it, but I wasn't able to totally act upon it or I lacked the confidence or, or, you know, maybe the support to do it before. Um, but now that I know it so well and I, and I fully support myself in it all, I want my children to know from a very early age, like, look what my mom, you know, look, look, look what, look what we can do. You know, like if we follow our dreams, look what can happen. And I just want to be that example to them that anything is possible. Well, you are. I mean, you absolutely are. You are living proof of that. So... They're very fortunate, and we're fortunate to, I'm fortunate to have you as a friend, and our listeners are fortunate to be able to hear your story and hopefully feel inspired or motivated or championed to, you know, go after their own passions and kind of follow their instincts and not necessarily feel like you have to follow the pack. And I love that. I love that message because I think nowadays it's really hard. There's so much fear. There's so much uncertainty. There's so much... Um, you know, of this comparison in life, you know, that we face and to be able to say, you know what, I can, I can go and I can do this and, and make a go of it. And even if it doesn't work out the way that you intended, at least, you know, you've, you've given it a shot. Right. And like at that point, like usually what happens is like you're led to something for a reason. And so if that particular idea doesn't pan out or that particular thing doesn't, well then, you're led to something else or something else happens that shows you, you know, this is the direction. But if you never jump and leap into that first thing that's burning inside of you, if you never leap into it, then all of the other good can't come. You know, like nothing good comes from just staying stagnant. Nothing good. Nothing grows. No ideas come. Nothing, nothing good. You can't. Like you got to jump. You know, like I love Mel Robbins. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Robbins, Five minute roll. Yeah. Awesome, awesome things. Yeah. And I actually had the pleasure of hearing her speak um, in person at a convention once, but she says like, basically, you know, like there's, there's nothing good staying on the side of fear. Like, you know, if you jump, only good can come when you jump onto the other side, you know, like, I don't exactly know the way she says, says it. She has a really good way of, of relaying that message, but it's basically like, where there is fear, that's where you have to go in any way in life because you have to tackle it. Like even if it's something as silly as like my biggest fear is like a, a mouse. Like I hate <laughs> mice. And I grew up like being paranoid. Like I didn't see a mouse until about 
five years ago because I was so scared. Like I would never, ever, ever, ever look at one. I, I was petrified. And so it got, I had to be confronted with it, like in my home, when my dog put it like on the countertop and it was scary. <laughs> and, um, basically what I'm getting at is it's just like you, you have to confront your fears and then you know, okay, like this really isn't that big a deal. This really isn't that scary. It's just this like yeah. little animal. Okay. Um, and then the same goes for like your fears of like, what are people going to think? What are da, 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 da. You're always going to have people that aren't going to agree with you, whether you're doing what you think you should be doing or not, you know? So why not do what you want to do? Why? You know, and then you're only going to inspire more people and you're going to wake up that feeling inside of you that's just going to grow so many other things in your life. So, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Tell our listeners, where can they find you if they want to learn more about any of the things that you're doing or if they want to follow along on your Instagram with the kiddos? Tell where it's the sure. best place. So the best thing is um, the local spotlight is, um, which I'm super excited about that because I actually just, I have a new person that's going to be filming and editing them. And by the time this rolls out, there's going to be a lot of videos up and he's like really good, really professional, really, really, really cool stuff that's going to come out from that. So I'm excited about that. Um, and you can find that on at local spotlight with Danielle. That's on Instagram. And then um, a lot of all the videos are on there. It's also at Local Spotlight with Danielle on Facebook. And then Red Barn Homeschool is at Red Barn Homeschool, Instagram and Facebook. And then my own personal one is Danielle K. Gannon at Danielle K. Gannon on Instagram and on Facebook. And we will have links, of course, in our show notes so everyone can just go there and click. They don't have to worry about writing it down, feverishly looking for a pen right now. We're going to take one more quick break, then we're going to come back with our wrap-up questions, so sit tight. All right, Danielle, this has been so much fun. I've loved hearing your story. I, I mean, I'm feeling inspired and motivated. So I just, it's been great. <laughs> we always like to wrap up our interviews by asking a couple questions. So this year I started asking our guests, what book or podcast have you has inspired you in your life. I know you just recently, ref you know, earlier referenced, you know, Mel Robbins, but is there a particular um, resource or somewhere that we could tell our listeners, like, this is really was a game changer in my life? Yes. Um, I, the first book that I read that really started to get me thinking a lot, um, I'd say about five, you know, it was like three or four years ago, three years ago, was Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. And that book is by Wayne Dyer. And um, he's a very like inspirational, spiritual guru who he's passed a couple of years ago, but he has like a wealth of knowledge around the ego and how to like come from like your spirit which is where you feel aligned and where you feel right and tapping into that knowing, that inner knowing, like that intuition, where you kind of know exactly what you need to do. Because it's all about, we already know. We go outside of ourselves looking for all of these answers, but we really already know if you can just learn to hear the voice within. And that taps into my whole thing about like, you know, listening to your heart and all. So that book I love, um, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, and that is Wayne Dyer. Um, another one was You Can Heal Your Life, from Louise Hay, and that's tied into that as well, which basically explains how our emotions drive so much of our physical ailments and our, um, our, our issues in life and how it's basically like once you can alleviate, release, and control those thoughts and bring only in what is going to serve you, your life gets better. And um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. That is, you know, an oldie, 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 but goodie. And that, again, is about thinking it into existence. And um, that really gets into the financial piece of how, you know, money is an energy exchange and you can really, you know, can really make exactly what it is you want to when you fully believe it yourself. So all those three have really been, you know, pivotal to my personal growth. And then there's a um, podcast 
by this guy, Mastin Kipp, K-I-P-P. And um, his, he has like a couple of really different, really, really good ones. It's about like tapping in and tuning into yourself. But the one I love so much, um, it's like a six minute video. And I used to listen to it all the time um, a couple of years ago when I was like going through like a lot of transition. And um, it's called How to Listen to Your Heart. Ooh. And I love that, that, that podcast so much. So well, amazing. thank you for all these great, I'm like feverishly writing down yeah. so <laughs> I can, yeah, no, this is great. I love it because I always love hearing, you know, what, what books were, were important and pivotal and, and trans for, for people. So this is great, great resources. And obviously we have podcast listeners. So always love to link to other podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course our, into this two wrap up questions, which are where in this particular season of your life do you feel the most organized and where do you feel like a bit of a hot mess? <laughs> okay. Um, that is a good wrap up question for this podcast, isn't it? it? Yes. Of course we have to break, we have to full circle it right oh, back to yeah, organizing. Yeah. <laughs> Total full circle. Um, I would say that where I feel the best in my um, organization is my goals and my ideas. I feel very organized in that way. I have it like compartmentalized in my head of exactly how I wanna get to the next step of what I wanna do. And, um, and, and, and I jot it down and I'm always taking notes and I'm always like just implementing. So I feel very organized in that way, like in my goals, dreams, and ideas. In terms of where I'm a hot mess, I would say my time management is slightly messy because um, I do feel like because there's so much going on, I, you know, a lot of times I'm just like running at full speed ahead, just trying to, you know, get, 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 get all this done. Um, and I could be a little bit better. Like I allow myself five minutes to get somewhere that's really 15 minutes. <laughs> Like every time I'm meeting somebody or a friend or a contact for dinner or whatever, I'm like, yeah, 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 I'll be there at 7.15. And I leave the house at like 7.08 thinking <laughs> I'm going to get there at 7.15. And, I, and I'm not going to get there at 7.15. So I do want to be better about that and allowing myself better time management skills. I love it. I love it. It's great. Well, Danielle, thank you so much. Thank you for carving out time out of your very busy schedule to sit down with me and all of our TOL community. And for all of you out there, if this is your first time tuning in, please don't forget, click the subscribe button, follow us. We're on social media at Simply Be Organized or hop on over into our Facebook group called This Organized Life Podcast. You can post questions, uh, ask for different topic ideas that you want to hear about or guests you want us to showcase on the show. Uh, we just love connecting with you. So thank you so much for tuning in. I am Lori Plow. Until next week. Peace out.